Well, uh, you have actually made a big promise uh, to the Nigerian people, saying 2014 is going to be, well, a, a fantastic one for the country as the government will tackle the insurgency. You also said something about the 7th Division of the Nigerian Army in Meduguri, and you say, well, that will also help in stemming the tide of violence in that part of the country. Could you expatiate more and tell us what the government is doing in that regard? In the regards of... You know, when you promised that, uh, well, 2014 will help, uh, well, the government will definitely stem the uh, tide of insurgency in some parts of the country. And uh, we also, uh, being su the supervising minister also of uh, defense, you talked also of the establishment of the 7th Division of the Nigerian Army in Meiduguri. So we we're asking to know what you mean by that big promise uh, for the Nigerian people. Well, I can say this. Um, I want to say that the Nigerian people should have confidence in what our security forces have been doing. Uh, first of all, we must understand that this insurgency well, arose from local politics, politicians, you know, uh, employing, uh, 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 you know, thugs and criminals, you know, to pursue their own ambitions. And then the situation goes beyond control. None of the insurgencies who are fighting is a result of federal government uh, action or activity. They are all the result, they are homebred, you know, local militia that arose because of local politics and then grew out of control. And the federal government, they had the responsibility. People go to create problems in their own part of the country, in their own states. When it blows out of control, it becomes our own responsibility. Yes, the president is the commander-in-chief, and his responsibility is to ensure peace all over the country. And that is what he's doing in the northeast of Nigeria. The war against terror is a continuing war. In 2013, the war went further in terms of success. If you remember before the, the declaration of the state of emergency, there were so many attacks in Mobi, for example, in, uh, in Adamawa state. Uh, there were multiple attacks in Kano. There were multiple attacks in several parts of the north. Today, by the grace of God and the effort of the security forces, like I said in my opening remarks, we have been able to contain this emergency largely to the two states of Yobe and Borono. Now, the seventh division of the Nigerian Army also came in as the, the, uh, the, the, the National Security Council review the situation in the Northeast. And we believe that the Northeast has become so vast that it cannot be adequately served from the third armor division in Jos. So we needed a presence of a whole division of the army because the Northeast is bigger than many countries in, in Africa. So we needed to now expand you know, the presence of the armed forces. And that's why we are setting up the seventh division. But it's something that will unfold with time. It has taken off. A commander, the a GOC has been appointed, as you, you recall. And we are presently setting up the structures of the seventh division so that we should have a permanent presence you know, of the Nigerian army in the northeast such that it will be able to contain you know, the crisis we see from the border with Cameroon, the border with Chad, the border with Niger. And as you know, this insurgency is an international insurgency because the combatants come from vast areas, from Mali, from Niger, from Chad, and, and of course Nigerians, you know, who are also part of it. So the, the war, as we are seeing, uh, is an international war that Nigeria has the burden to fight. And that is why we believe that we need cooperation from, the, from all our neighbors and the international community. If you look at that region, uh, in the past 30 years, there has been war in Chad, there has been war in South Sudan, Mali has been unstable, Niger has been unstable, and this area has become a vortex, you know, of all sorts of criminals and the flow of, of, of arms. And so what we are seeing in Nigeria today is the gradual deterioration of the situation across the border with these countries. And it filters into Nigeria because our people have gone, you know, to create the situation for these elements to come in. So our government will do everything. I believe that this administration, like I said, is doing better than Pakistan. It's doing better than what is happening in Afghanistan. You, you, we should see this insurgency as doing something that in 2014 it will disappear. No. It is something that will linger for a while because the insurgents will continue to attack and run until the atmosphere becomes completely inhospitable. So we are fighting some long-drawn guerrilla war and we are succeeding as a country and we should not discourage ourselves. Yes, we regret that there have been attacks at Burma and uh, 
and the airport. Definitely, the security measures are also being taken to contain what has happened. But the reality is that we should not allow those incidents to overshadow the general successes that have been recorded. And the strategy is continue to isolate them where they are until they filter out. So we believe that 2014 witnessed greater activities and it is a prayer with the cooperation of citizens, particularly government community leaders in the Northeast. Because in the end, in the end, the security forces on them by their, themselves alone cannot wipe out insurgency. These insurgents live among our communities. So we, are, we continuously call on the government and people of Yobe and Bruno State to do more in terms of cooperation, information that is given to citizens. I want to compare what is happening in the Northeast and Kano. When insurgents hit Kano, the whole people of Kano led by the Emir rose against it. Today, Kano is inhospitable not because of security forces alone, but the people of Kano are up in arms. Wherever they see or notice the movement of any insurgents, they quickly network with security forces to confront them. And it has made Kano to be a bit quiet for now. But like I said, the most important thing about this insurgency is that politicians, politicians particularly in these states, which continue to use violence as a means of politics, must stop it because it is now costing the nation trillions of naira, which would have been using, you know, for the development of the country. So we believe honestly that politics must be either peaceful or you leave leave your ambition. If your ambition is going to lead to the you know destruction of your community, then it has no meaning to me and the, it has no meaning for this nation. So as we move towards 2015, well, well, you know, what we'll, could we'll trigger further trouble? That and see how our uh, politics uh, is uh, playing a role in People threatening blood flow. These are the things that encourage violence in parts of the north. Uh, politics has actually affected uh, insecurity in some parts of the country. But again, when we say we're getting into, well, less than 48 hours now, we'll get into the new year. Uh, for those in the North is they can't be saying Happy New Year if the government is not thinking of uh, economic recovery, bringing back the social economic life of those people. What is this particular administration doing to bring back uh, economic uh, life in the North East? You know, first of all, the, 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 the most important support of government is security. Because without security, you cannot have economic recovery. So the most important activity of government today is that we are spending so much money in the Northeast. If you look at all the military operations, we spend billions and billions monthly to give the Northeast security. That is the first investment. We could have used this money for the rest of the country. We are using it in the Northeast. We are spending so much in the, we are spending more money in the northeast today than in any part of the country because of the cost of this insurgency, which runs into billions, you know, as we deploy resources, deploy systems, and we are losing lives. Many innocent Nigerians, the blood of our children being sacrificed in the northeast. That is the first commitment we are doing to keep that part of the country quiet. And like I said, this insurgency was homegrown. And so the government and the people of Nigeria are already investing a lot in the northeast. But we also believe that for a long time, I can tell you frankly that many state governments have failed in that region. If you look at the, the, the economic indices of the Northeast, they are the lowest in the country. Like the last time we were reviewing MDGs, we found that Yobe was having less than 20% uh, primary school enrollment. This is unacceptable. And yet, if you look at federal resources that are shared you know, across the country, there is no region that is cheated. The Northeast has the, its own allocation that goes there every month. And I can tell you that, if in particularly, take primary education, for example. From the Basic Education Commission, every money spent in the state, federal funds are 50%. And this money goes to all the states pro rata. No state is cheated. Why is it that some states are able to get 40 50%, 60% school enrollment, and any state in Nigeria today will be talking about under 20% school enrollment? These are local fellows. And there is a limit to what you can generate economic activity in any state in Nigeria from federal level. Federal interventions are mainly, you know, interventions to ameliorate situation and to encourage local effort. But we must get governance right at the state level. If government does not perform in those states, like we have seen consistently now in the last, uh, in the last, uh, uh, in the few, few years, you know, consistently poor performance. Setting of priorities, violent politics, 
All this will destabilize even federal effort we are making. But all the same, it is the responsibility of the federal government to ensure that if any part of the country has reached a level that we need further intervention, we do so. And already from this year's budget, in addition to the billions we are spending for security, we are now beginning to set aside some resources for the Northeast. And this will progressively increase as the security situation improves. And if security does not improve, even what we are putting in will not succeed. So the first investment is security. The second one now is the extra federal intervention the president has promised. And we already have seen that in this year's budget, this is coming on. So we now want to encourage the states that are involved. They must get their priorities right. They must network with the federal government. If they don't do that, then, you know, underdevelopment will become you know, a permanent feature, which we don't want to see in that region.